This is me when I came to Beijing ten years ago. I always had to wear a mask as the haze and smog had sort of become old acquaintances back then. I still remember a headline from January 2013: "Cities in China are shrouded in smog." 多个城市空气质量出现六级严重污染 Now, after ten years, I'm still in Beijing, but I've noticed that I really see smog anymore. I mean, there are still smoggy days, but this kind of weather has become far more common. It's not just my imagination. Here are some numbers to prove it. This is a map showing the number of smoggy days in 2013 in China, and Beijing is right here. With the darkest color, so PM 2.5 is a key metric for smog. In 2013, nationwide PM 2.5 concentrations averaged 72 micrograms per cubic meter. Most studies indicate that if this number is above 35 during the 24-hour period, the air is considered unhealthy. However, by 2022, the average PM 2.5 concentrations had dropped to 29 micrograms per cubic meter.、Um, I found some photos of Beijing that clearly show the gradual change of the air quality. So these are 10 collages of photos taken daily in Beijing over the past decade, and we can see the number of clear and the blue skies has gradually increased. So, what has happened during the past decade, especially policy-wise? I did some research, and here's what I found important. I'm Xiao Xian. Welcome to Unboxing China. To figure this out, I identified key years from the past decade: 2013, 2015, and 2018. So, let's go through this list. On January 1st, 2013, China's Environmental Air Quality Monitoring Network was launched, and for the first time ever, the public could access real-time AQI and PM 2.5 concentrations data for 74 cities. Another crucial policy was also introduced that year: the Air Pollution Prevention and Control Action Plan. For the first time ever, it requires significant reductions in PM 2.5 concentrations by 2017. For key regions like Beijing, it set the target of lowering PM 2.5 by 25 percent. The action plan also introduced 10 measures to achieve that goal, including adjusting energy structure, developing clean energy, and promoting public transportation. To that end, Beijing began to reduce coal consumption and gradually close coal mines, because studies show that coal is the main driver of PM 2.5 air pollutants. For example,、um, this study from Tsinghua University and the Massachusetts-based Health Effects Institute said that coal was responsible for about 40 percent of PM 2.5 air pollutants in China's atmosphere in 2013. And then natural gas was recommended as a substitute for homes. Hence, Beijing and other major Chinese cities accelerated their actions for tackling air pollution. Now we come to second on my list, 2015. On January 1st, 2015, China's updated Environmental Protection Law came into force. Why was it so important? First, it hadn't been revised since its enactment in 1989. Second. It provided a legal grounds for the action plan we just mentioned, and third, we can just look at some of its highlights. Polluting companies faced uncapped fines. NGOs were welcome to initiate public interest lawsuits, and local governments would be held accountable for implementing environmental policies. These changes all proved the government's sense of urgency on environmental issues. Upon this reinvigorated legal foundation, a new law designed specifically to tackle air pollution, the Air Pollution Prevention and Control Law, or the New Air Law, came into full effect a year later. It also mandated、uh, stricter emission limits and heavier penalties. Here are some typical cases involving new air law violations in Beijing that give us an idea of its impact. Next on the list, 
But before we really get into it, let's turn back the clock to 2017. The action plan we mentioned earlier set 2017 as a deadline for some major goals, and the country began to study relevant outcomes. So how did Beijing perform? By the end of 2017, Beijing had lowered PM2.5 concentrations by 35%, which was far beyond the 25% target. The city also increased its number of blue sky days. But the government felt that this still wasn't enough. So based on these achievements, it issued another three-year action plan uh, in 2018, this time for winning the blue sky defense battle. This toughened the earlier action plan's targets and set new ones for reducing sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides, as well as defining the number of good and poor air quality days that the city should have. This time around, the government again named the sustainable energy transition as one of the key initiatives, including reducing the emissions in the coal sector and speeding up the efforts to get the polluting vehicles off the country's roads. By 2020, every coal mine in Beijing had been shut down. This is the city's last coal mine. I've been there and I saw the site has been converted into a forest farm. Isn't that amazing? Today, 10 years after the first major battle against air pollution began, it's safe to say that virtually every city in the country has much cleaner air, though there is still much that can be improved. I'll also give you some general numbers. From 2013 to 2022, China's PM2.5 concentrations had dropped by 57%. The number of polluted days had reduced by 92%. So this list not only shows some of the um, key efforts during the past decade, but also demonstrates the subtle evolution, in my opinion, in the uh, national governance. I have personally noticed that during these years, green development has been mentioned more and more frequently. But it's also evident in reports emanating from uh, the country's most important political events. For example, the report to the 19th CPC National Congress highlights preventing and controlling pollution as a major task. The latest report to the 20th CPC National Congress mentions a new concept, the Chinese path to modernization, which includes the modernization of harmony between humanity and nature. So these policies are not just isolated or random moves, they are much more than that. They are the manifestations of the overall improvement of the country's general development path. 